Hey folks, my name is Mo Amir and this is Van Keller, British Columbia's bonafide culture and politics TV talk show. We're going to focus on BC politics tonight with some very fresh polling data as BC's political landscape may be changing a year out from the next provincial election. Also, with overlapping crises and the cost of rent continuing to go up and up and up and up and up and up, is BC Premier David Eby still popular? Here to explain is pollster extraordinaire, the president of Research Co, Mario Canseco. Mario, thanks for being on the show again. Again, here I am. Great to be here again. Always a pleasure. So let's kick it off with, with what I just said. Is, is David Eby and the BC NDP still popular? The numbers are good for them right now. Uh, there's a seven point drop in his own personal rating, 52% right now. They're still leading when it comes to voting intention, almost 50%. Wow. So it hasn't really been a dent in the way people feel about the NDP right now. The hmm. big movement is with everybody else. And before we get to them, I, I want to talk about Premier EB just for a second here. I feel like on the federal end, even before, you know, the the federal liberals and the prime minister, you know, <laughs> celebrated a Nazi in the House of Commons, Justin Trudeau was wearing a lot of the frustrations that Canadians have. And yet here in BC, we have a lot of the same frustrations and arguably we've had those frustrations for even longer. And yet Yet the BC NDP and David Eby seem immune. So why are they so popular? Well, it's not happening right now for a couple of reasons. The election is too far away. There's more mm. discussion about what is happening federally. People are more upset with what is happening federally in a way. Municipal governments have only had a year to try to deal with the housing crisis, and they're mm. still sort of in the honeymoon phase as far as, well, they've only been there a year. We can't expect them to do much. So is Trudeau Eby's shield? In a way, this is what <laughs> happened, you know, we had a, a, back in 2020, 2021, we had the emergence of a fascinating voter. It was the Horgan Trudeau voter. Right. Somebody who voted for the NDP provincially and who voted for the Liberals federally. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, Horgan is gone. Trudeau is no longer as popular. So what is going to happen with that voter? And that voter right now is not complaining necessarily about what is happening provincially, but looking at the federal issue and saying, maybe this is their fault. Hmm. We've seen some other polls, and I want to get to your polling data about BC United, formerly the BC Liberals. They are the official opposition in the BC legislature, but they seem to be struggling, losing a lot of support potentially to the BC Conservatives, but maybe even to the BC NDP. What are you seeing with their numbers right now? Right now, what we have is a tie for second place. If you look at the statistics, 20% uh, for BC United, 19% for the BC Conservatives. Wow. Uh, this is very low, and it's definitely not a situation that the BC Liberals used to be in when they were called BC Liberals. But one thing that really shocks me about the numbers this week is how many people are undecided. Usually you get about one in 10 who say, I don't know who to vote for. Hmm. But right now that number is at 18%. Hmm. So you have almost one in every five voters going, where's Horgan? Because David Eby, I don't know about. <laughs> uh, what is BC United? Yeah. And, and who are the BC Conservatives? Will they run candidates in my riding? Because hmm. part of what happened in the last two elections is people flirting with the BC Conservatives, showing up to their polling station, and then there's no candidate for the BC Conservatives. Right. So all of that is leading to this heightened number of undecideds, which is something that I've never seen before. So with BC United, is it a problem of brand recognition where people are unaware that the BC Liberals are now BC United? Or is it an issue of the BC Conservatives eating their vote? Or is it an issue of, you know, the BC NDP really kicking their ass for the last few years so the, the party is struggling? I think it's a combination of all the factors. You know, part of it is not knowing what BC United is. You know, we haven't had that situation where people said we were the BC Liberals. They haven't knocked on doors. I think they're hoping to change that once the election rolls around. And the issue for the conservatives, I mean, we need to remember, this is a province that federally has always voted for the conservatives and mm. had them in first place with the exception of one election this century. And that was 2015 through the mania too. So <laughs> it's a conservative <laughs> province, you know, whether we like it or not, whether people like this or not. So it's normal for somebody to say, oh, there's a BC Conservative Party. I'm there. Now, will they run a candidate in my writing? That still remains to be seen. So let's talk about the BC Conservatives for a second. Are they riding just the wave of popularity that I think Pierre Polyev has nationally? And, and people are just, you know, when they're being pulled, they're saying, OK, conservative, check. 
Or is there something more to this? Because obviously the party was quite dormant before. It is a little more active now. It has official party status, which we'll talk about later in the show. <laughs> so what's going on with the BC Conservatives in terms of what the polling data is showing us? There's a couple of things that are different from years past. If you look at the BC Conservatives back in 2013, 2017, there's two very credible people in the House. That makes a difference. There's also the situation related with the Conservatives federally. But more than anything, it's connection at the local level. You know, we see them in second place in Metro Vancouver in the Fraser Valley. Really? Wow, we only okay. have BC United in second place in Southern BC, which is always one of their strongholds. Hmm. So part of it is people who are looking at an option to the NDP and aren't, they aren't really convinced that uh, they're going to get that with BC United. Historically, though, I feel like in polling data, BC Conservatives have always had inflated numbers. And then come Election Day, <laughs> people go, oh, it's not the same as the federal Conservatives. And they end up voting, you know, BC Liberal presumably now BC United. So is there a chance that this phenomenon is still happening, but it's it's perhaps greatly exaggerated because of Pierre Polyev or, or whatever else? I think part of what inflates their numbers is improperly conducted public opinion research. Uh, now, mine is not like that. You so need it's your to... fault. No, no it's, it's the fault of everybody else. Okay, but uh, your numbers are showing their, their numbers to be quite oh, strong. No, yeah, now, but what, what, what the issue is here is if you're asking people two days before an election, will you vote for the BC Conservatives? And you're asking a respondent who doesn't have a BC Conservative candidate in the writing, you're not conducting proper public opinion right. research. This is the reason why some other companies might have the BC Conservatives before an election at 7, 8, or 10%. We had them on two and they got two. You only ask people who can vote for the party. Really quickly, in when you were polling folks and you were polling them for BC United, did you also have the name BC Liberal attached to it so people could make that connection? Or was it just no. BC United? No, but what we do is we ask people who they voted for in the last election. Okay. And what we see is people who definitely identify with the BC Liberals, voted for the BC Liberals, under Andrew Wilkinson, certainly not as many as, as those who voted back in 2017, mm -hmm. uh, then they just don't know. Is this the same party? Am I going somewhere else? I'm confused. And this is why we have 18% undecided, which is completely a rarity when it comes to BC politics. Mario, if you're a betting man, who's going to be the next premier? <laughs> or will David Eby continue to be premier uh, once we have the election uh, next year? It's too tough to make this call at this stage. <laughs> I mean, one other thing that could happen Let is me get you on the record so that in a year no. I can call you on it. No. Come on, man. No. <laughs> Whoever we have uh, leading the day before the election, which is when you call these things, that's what I would hope happens. Mario, I appreciate your time tonight. Thank you so much for your insights. Uh, I hope to have you back. I'm sure you, I'm sure you will be back as long as uh, we're still cool. Of course, we're cool. <laughs> Mario, thanks so much. <laughs> Folks, that was Van Collar, fan favorite, president of Research Co., Mario Canseco. Now, after some business, let's talk to the man who crossed the floor from BC United to the BC Conservatives, giving the BC Conservatives official party status and giving BC United a real kick in the pants. MLA Bruce Banman is here, up next. <laughs> 